Hello friends, welcome to the final installment of our cuff down sock series, the toe. So far we have worked a cuff, we worked the leg, we did waist yarn for an afterthought heel, we worked the foot, and now we're ready to do the toe. Now, I'm not forgetting, I know we need to come back and do this heel, but this heel is symmetrical. So you'll see that it's nearly the same for a cuff down sock as it is for a toe up sock. So they're gonna be in one video together. The toe we're gonna do today is often called a square toe. Let me explain why. So what we're about to do here is we're going to start a series of decreases alternating every other row and it's going to decrease in like this and at a certain point we're going to stop decreasing and we're going to get a nice squared off bit at the top. The reason that I like this toe as opposed to a rounded toe is you just decrease every other row. You don't have to memorize any other sequence of decreases which I really really like. So before I show you how to do the decreases, let's talk about the number that we're gonna decrease to. So right now my total stitch count is 60. Ideally, I'd like to get to half of those total stitches before I finish decreasing for my toe. But we're just gonna look at one side at a time. So I've got 30 stitches here, and I'm gonna be decreasing on either side, which is two stitches from this set. Now, ideally I would get down to 15 because I have 30 here and half of that is 15. But if you have taken any kind of math class, you know that I can't decrease two stitches from 30 because 30 is an even number. If I decrease down two stitches, two stitches, two stitches, there's no way that I can end up at 15 because it's an odd number. So don't worry. What we're gonna do is look at your stitches here, divide it in half. So 30 divided in half is 15. And now I'm just gonna find the even number on either side. I could either go up to 16 or down to 14. And today I'm gonna to choose to go down to 14 stitches on either side, making my total 28 stitches when I'm done decreasing. Since we're starting a new section here, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this last row with my red marker. We're not gonna be counting anymore as far as rows go, so you don't have to worry about this that much but I'm gonna mark it just for purposes of showing the different sections of our sock. All right, let's get started on those decrease rounds. Our first round is a decrease round. We're gonna repeat the same thing on this needle that we will on this back needle. Start with a knit one. Then we're gonna do a decrease that leans left towards the center, a slip slip knit. Slip one knitwise, slip a second stitch knitwise, and then insert this left needle into both of these stitches so that it pops up to the front. This sets you up to knit these two stitches together through the back. And that's our first decrease. Now we're gonna knit across until we have three stitches remaining on this needle. Once you have three stitches remaining, we're gonna do our second decrease. This time it's going to lean right towards the center. It's a knit two together. So knit two together, and then knit one. Now we're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. Knit one, slip slip knit, Knit to the last three stitches. Once you get to the last three stitches, knit two together and knit one. And that concludes the decrease round. Round two is a plain knit round. So just start knitting all the way till you get back to the beginning. You're gonna alternate round one, which is a decrease round, and round two, a plain knit round, until you get to about half of your stitches. And I will meet you there. I 
I finished working all of my decreases every other round until I got to about half my stitches, which is 28 total stitches and 14 on each needle. Make sure you finish by working that plain knit round. For the final step of the toe, you're gonna need two other tools, a pair of scissors to cut your yarn and a darning needle. I like this really skinny, bent tipped metal darning needle. You do need a small one since we're working with sock yarn, although the bent tip is not necessary, but it's really nice to get into those stitches. What we're about to do is known as the Kitchener stitch or grafting. We're actually going to do sort of a sewn bind off that's going to put these two rows of needles together into a seamless, uh, a seamless seam or join. Um, it's going to be really comfortable on your toe and you're not going to feel it at all. So let's get started. The first step is to cut a length of yarn that's about four times the width of the toe that you're doing. That will give you more than enough to work with for this bind off. Next, you need to thread your needle so that it's ready to do the Kitchener stitch. Let's look at our setup for the Kitchener stitch. There's a front needle here and a back needle here. Each of these needles has their own pattern for the Kitchener stitch. We'll start with the front needle. The pattern for the front needle always starts with knit, and we can remember this because we're looking at the knit side when we're working the front needle. The pattern is going to be knit off, purl on. Let me show you what I mean. With your tapestry needle, making sure your yarn is hanging down and not wrapped around either one of these knitting needles. Go ahead and go into the first stitch like a knit, and this is going to be our knit off. So slide that stitch off and then pull your tapestry needle and that yarn all the way through until it's even but not tight or loose. Our next stitch is a purl on. Take your tapestry needle, go into the next stitch like a purl. You're going to pull it all the way through without sliding that stitch off. Next, we move on to the back needle. The back needle always starts with purl, and we can remember that because we're looking at the purl side, the inside of the sock, when we work this back needle. The pattern for the back needle is purl off, knit on. So take your tapestry needle, make sure your yarn is hanging down, and we're gonna go into that first stitch like a purl, and it's going to come off, and then we're gonna pull our yarn and tapestry needle all the way through until it's even. The next stitch is going to be a knit on, still on the back needle, making sure your yarn stays in between. Go into this next stitch like a knit, and it's going to stay on as you pull the yarn all the way through. From there, our pattern just repeats. We work the front needle, the back needle, the front needle, the back needle, all the way until we have one stitch remaining. I'm going to show you slow again, and then I'll speed it up a little, and I think you'll see that it gets easier when it's sped up. The front needle always starts with knit because we can see the knit side. The pattern for the front needle is knit off, purl on. With your tapestry needle, go into the first stitch like a knit, slide it off, and then pull through until even. For the second stitch, we're going to purl on, go into the stitch like a purl, pull all the way through, leaving that stitch on. Then we move straight to the back needle. The back needle always starts with purl because we can see those purls on the inside of the sock. We're going to purl off and then knit on. So with your tapestry needle, go into that first stitch like a purl, purl off slide all the way through until even. That second stitch is going to be a knit on, keeping your yarn in between. Go into that next stitch like a knit, leave it on the needle, and slide all the way through until even. I'm going to keep repeating these steps, but I'm going to combine the off and on stitch so that each needle just has one step. You might find this a little bit easier to remember. So on the front, we're starting with knit, 
knit off, purl on. But I'm gonna do these at the same time. I'm gonna go into my first stitch like a knit, take it off, before I pull, pull anything through, I'm gonna go into the second stitch like a purl and leave it on. Then when I pull through, I only have to pull through one time for my front needle. Let me go to the back and do the same thing. The back always starts with a purl. It's purl off, knit on. I'm going to purl off and then go into the next stitch as a knit and leave it on and pull through just once. You can already start to see this nice looking Kitchener grafting stitch coming together. So I'm gonna show you that last part I showed you up to speed so you can get that rhythm really in your head. Let's start with the front needle. Knit, off, purl, on. Back needle. Purl, off, knit, on. Front needle. Knit, off, purl, on. Back needle. Purl, off, knit on. Knit off, purl on. Purl off, knit on. Continue those steps all the way until you have two stitches remaining, and we're still going to do the same steps. Knit off, purl on, and then the back needle, purl off, and knit on. Now you should just have one stitch remaining on each needle, and we're just gonna do the last steps with those. We're going to go into the front and knit off, go into the back, purl off, and your grafting or kitchener is complete. Whenever I finish kitchenering a toe, I always have a bit of a wing on this side. And the way I resolve that is when I weave in this end, I poke my needle into the inside of the sock, probably like right here. And when I pull that through, it's gonna take care of that little wing tip here. I put my hand inside the sock so I can grab onto the tip of the needle. And then I'm just gonna pull that all the way through. And that will resolve most of that little tip that you see. When you weave in this end, make sure that you're weaving it in on the top of the foot. So don't weave it in on this side because the heel will be here, which makes this the bottom of the foot. And you don't want to have any ends on the bottom of your foot. Make sure you're weaving it on the inside of the sock, on the top of the foot, so that you won't fill it when you're wearing the sock. Now we're all finished creating a nice square toe for our cuff down sock. The last step we have is to put in the afterthought heel. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to pick up these stitches around the waist yarn and remove the waist yarn. Then what we're going to do is make a heel almost identical to this toe. We're gonna to do the same kinds of decreases and the Kitchener stitch again. If you're struggling with the Kitchener stitch, this is probably the most challenging bit of a cuff down sock. You are not alone. Just keep practicing it and you will get it. See you next time.